Air pollution refers to the release of chemicals into the air that are harmful to human health and the planet. The World Health Organization estimates that 92% of people live in places with harmful levels of air pollution, and that air pollution is the leading cause of early mortality worldwide. Air pollution also is a major threat to our ecosystems and the many living things within them. Nitrogen and sulfur pollution affect ecosystems across the United States and their ability to provide people with fresh air, clean water, food, and shelter. As nitrogen and sulfur deposition increase and permeate the ecosystem, more organisms and processes within an ecosystem are harmed. In the United States, the Environmental Protection Agency and state governments have the authority to regulate nitrogen and sulfur-containing pollutants to protect human health and ecosystems. Land management agencies like the USDA Forest Service, Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and National Park Service also have management responsibilities to protect sensitive species and ecosystems. One concept they use to do this is critical loads. As you recall from the other videos, a critical load is the level of deposition at which an ecosystem begins to experience harm. Let's take a closer look at how land managers are currently using critical loads. Air specialists may use critical loads when reviewing Clean Air Act permit applications. They use critical loads to decide whether new developments near protected preserves will increase air pollution to detrimental levels. Wilderness managers use critical loads to assess trends in wilderness character. They may use critical loads to interpret monitoring data and predict where and how nitrogen and sulfur levels will impact sensitive plants and animals. Forest and park managers use critical loads in planning. They compare critical loads to current or projected future deposition in order to prioritize restoration projects, build deposition reduction partnerships, and manage habitat for sensitive species. For many ecosystems, land managers consider multiple critical loads when assessing the effects of air pollution and planning for mitigation measures. For example, in Rocky Mountain National Park there are critical loads that protect sensitive diatom communities in high elevation lakes, critical loads that protect the iconic herb communities of the high alpine meadows, critical loads that protect lichen diversity, critical loads that protect tree growth and survival, and critical loads that protect soil and watershed integrity. When considered together, these critical loads show that as deposition increases, nitrogen affects a greater proportion of the ecosystem, including organisms and non-living components, like soil and water. To mitigate these effects, Rocky Mountain National Park managers are working with local partners to reduce their nitrogen emissions on days when the wind blows pollutants into the park. However, it's important to consider that even a single critical load can provide protection for many species within an ecosystem because biological diversity sustains the network of interactions between living organisms. Let's examine a specific case to better illustrate how a single critical load can protect other species. Mycorrhizal fungi live in the soil and form partnerships with tree roots. These fungi help trees absorb nutrients and water from the soil. They also facilitate the exchange of nutrients between trees. If nitrogen deposition exceeds the critical load for mycorrhizal fungi, it reduces the growth of the more sensitive fungi and diminishes the fungi's partnerships with tree roots. As a result, the trees are less able to absorb nutrients and water from the soil and more vulnerable to drought or insects. The stressed trees may grow more slowly, producing fewer leaves and seeds. These trees then provide less food and habitat for wildlife.
Therefore, if land managers use critical loads to protect mycorrhizal fungi in an area, they will also be protecting the trees and animals connected to them. By preserving this biodiversity with critical loads, land managers will also be making ecosystems more resilient against other environmental changes, such as climate change or invasive species. We hope this series of videos has illustrated the significance of air quality in maintaining healthy ecosystems. We also hope it showed how land managers use critical loads to predict and mitigate harm to ecosystems. For more information, visit the National Atmospheric Deposition Program's Critical Loads of Atmospheric Deposition Science Committee webpage. On this site, you can learn about status and trends in deposition, critical loads, and critical load exceedances. And finally, remember, we can all do our part to help reduce air pollution by increasing energy efficiency, reducing the waste of energy, food, and goods, transitioning to clean fuels, making environmentally friendly consumer choices, eating a more plant-centered diet, and recycling and reusing more.